the incidence of Hodgkin's lymphoma remains high in HIV-positive patients despite the use of retrovirals. So we are at the ASH meeting on uh, hematologic malignancies in Chicago, and before we give you some new information on that particular topic, I want to introduce you to Adam Olczewski, who is from Memorial Hospital in Rhode Island and an assistant professor of medicine at the Alpert Medical School of Brown University. First off, thank you very much for your time. Uh, before we talk about this rather large analysis of the years from the National Cancer Database, let's start with some uh, background, why did you do this study? Well, uh, we have, I, I have always been interested in uh, using the database that already exists uh, for evaluation of treatment patterns in hematologic malignancies. Um, unfortunately, uh, most of the cancer registry data is set up not for the purpose of looking at treatments particularly, especially in hematologic malignancies where details of chemotherapy uh, come into play. But uh, we obtained the data set from the National Cancer Database, uh, and we wanted to look at uh, various treatment patterns over the past 10 to 15 years in patients who had HIV infection, both in non-Hodgkin and Hodgkin lymphoma. We presented data about non-Hodgkin lymphoma at the ASCO meeting earlier this year, and we thought it would be worthwhile to look at Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, which is considered um, a highly curable disease. We expect to see rates of uh, long-term survival in the, in the range of 85 to 90 percent. And there had been some uh, discrepancy between clinical series that have been published over the past two, three years um, from Germany, uh, the UK, and more recently from France, suggesting that indeed the survival of HIV positive and negative patients is actually the same. Um, and the discrepancy was with the um, population-based studies from the US, which actually suggested that this is significantly lower. Uh, the analysis from the National Cancer Institute uh, showed that uh, the survival of patients with uh, HIV was uh, 63 versus 83, so it was a large uh, disproportion. So we wanted to look at it and find out uh, whether this was related to the actual delivery of chemotherapy treatment or, whether, or to other factors. And uh, the National Can Cancer Database, fortunately, uh, contains information about delivery of chemotherapy. So we were able to look at uh, patients who did or did not receive this treatment and how this uh, affected their survival. So this was a pretty large study. How many people did you analyze in the NCTB? We requested data for all patients with Hodgkin lymphoma diagnosed between 2004 and 2012, although we excluded certain groups. Those uh, were records of treatment and survival uh, were unreliable, and the nodule lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, which is in reality a somewhat different disease. Right. So in the end, uh, we had about 44,000 patients with uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, of which 5% uh, had a recorded HIV positive status, which was consistent with the data from the SEER database, uh, where there was uh, about 4%. So what did you learn? What are the takeaways from this? So interestingly, what we have found that uh, if we somewhat simplistically look at uh, unadjusted survival of all patients, it consistently uh, comes down lower for patients who are HIV positive. However, uh, if we do subselect the group who did receive chemotherapy, with the caveat that we cannot say if it was a standard treatment or modified in any way, then we actually find that patients with the classical histologic subtypes the nodule sclerosis, mixed similarity, which is uh, more prevalent in HIV patients, they actually had the similar survival. Uh, in this very large data set, the, there was no statistically significant difference between uh, those subtypes. However, there's a fairly large group, about 40% of patients with uh, HIV uh, infection, who had an um, unrecorded, undetermined uh, histologic subtype of Hodgkin lymphoma. Mm. And these patients persistently have worse survival, even with administration of standard therapy. We could not tell if these were the patients who um, had uh, worse HIV-related status, uh, no treatment, or more profound immunosuppression, or whether there is something biologically different about patients who have <coughs> undetermined subtype, perhaps related to bone marrow involvement. Uh, a significant proportion of these patients were diagnosed from the bone marrow biopsy. Um, or whether there are other factors. These patients were at higher risk of actually not receiving treatment. And we also identified uh, other groups uh, at higher risk of not receiving therapy. Altogether, about 81% of patients uh, received chemotherapy, which was lower than among HIV-negative patients. Um, but uh, patients who are black, uh, living in uh, lower income areas, or who are older, at a high, or were at high risk of actually not receiving standard treatment. So do you think that's why so many HIV-positive patients were less likely to receive chemotherapy than the HIV-negative patients? Um, right. I think that there are many factors of which many are unobserved. I think the principal factor that, that is driving delivery of treatment is the clinician's perception of whether the patient can withstand it or not. Uh, HIV uh, positive patients uh, with Hodgkin lymphoma have interestingly typically higher CD4 counts than we see in non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And yet there are groups uh, who may have more advanced AIDS um, or 
other medical problems or psychosocial barriers to receiving treatment. And I think one of the main points uh, of the study uh, for the clinicians is that uh, we should try to deliver a standard curative therapy for Hodgkin lymphoma as long as it is possible. And we have to find ways to deliver it safely using growth factors, um, using our colleagues in infectious disease uh, departments to help us manage the antiretrovirals and the infectious disease prophylaxis. And if you do use it, the the odds are pretty much equal right. that so they're going to get assistance. Yes. That we, we do see uh, survival rates uh, that are identical to patients who are HIV negative as long as they're able to receive uh, the same treatment. Now for this Hodgkin's lymphoma with undetermined histology, what do you take away from this? I mean, is there, are these people who really you have to try and target as much as possible? I mean, it, are they not help, helpable? I mean, what's, what are you learning from these? Unfortunately, this is a limitation of this data set. We could not really tell uh, why they had this undetermined subtype. Uh, there is also a, a, a significant group of HIV-negative patients who have undetermined subtype, and actually they do fairly well. So what's specific about HIV-positive patients? Perhaps this is a particularly aggressive disease that is invading extranodal sites right. where the excisional lymph node biopsy is not a possibility, or maybe these are just the patients who have very uh, poor immune status. So your take-home message then? Um, our take-home message is to uh, try to identify patients who would be at risk of not receiving chemotherapy, use resources to help them get to that point. Uh, if they are not on the retrovirals, try to get them on them, um, use help from uh, our infectious disease colleagues, and try to deliver the same um, uh, curative therapy as much as possible, particularly for those who have nodular sclerosis or mixed cellularity subtype, which are highly curable, just as in HIV-negative patients. And the outcomes are comparable. Exactly. That's really encouraging. We have a variety of uh, interviews that we're doing here in Chicago, so please look around for those. And for Azure Clinical News, I am Rick McGuire.